Greetings, sending you all some warm, positive vibrations. This is Body Culinary, and happy, blessed New Year, new cycle. <laughs> it's going to be whatever uh, we make it, literally, with the actions we take, um, with the focus, and getting into action consistently around the things that we say that we value. Hopefully, health and confidence uh, are some core values for you. So I wanted to come in uh, today just to touch in on the topic or the subject, something I've been thinking about is body and fine cottony Afro textured hair. So fine in the context that it's not uh, a whole lot of hair, um, but yet it's very delicate and it's very, very it's super duper fine. This was a big fluffy double strand twist. I want to talk about body because as you look at hair commercials and you look at different YouTube channels and all the different ways that we style our hair as um, chocolate women of the diaspora, one of the ways that we like to style our hair if we get um, press and curls, I remember I grew up on press and curls and then later I begged for dark and lovely much to my own demise. Uh, but one of the things that we're looking for is a body. And just spraying our hair, you know, the, um, the women that have the really snatched tight, really done up looking weaves, something we're looking for is body and movement. Yet Afro textured hair has very unique characteristics. It's a very unique DNA marker. So that's what we're gonna chat about if you're interested in this uh, communication, this conversation, feel free to tune in. Uh, do, if you are interested in content around radical self-acceptance, which it looks like this over here in this little corner of the universe, being really creative with the unique features that have been assigned, right, um, to us. Greetings, greetings. So this is what we've got. This is what I've got. And rather than fight it, I have chosen to celebrate it and to brace myself for any kinds of feeling of anxiety because that could come up. Not so much anymore, but if we're honest, every now and then we are affected by um, other human beings. There's something in our wiring that has us wanting to, it's almost wired automatically to compare ourselves to other people. I think perhaps some of that is natural. It is definitely something that is manipulated and exploited in marketing. So uh, when I was growing up, I remember uh, when I got older and I saw some of the girls when we got our um, some of my Latina sisters, when we were young, we got our first jobs and they would pay money to get their blowout. So my mom, we did our hair all our on our own. There was still press and curl beauty shop. So they used to call them the beauty parlor. parlor. They didn't call it the salon. It was called the beauty parlor. And maybe around Easter or the holidays, uh, my mom would pay to get my hair straight. And that was very, very rare. Most of us got our hair done um, in the kitchen. <laughs> maybe if there was an auntie that was would take the time or your mom, if she had the time, especially around Easter or um, the holidays. But I remember when I would look at some of the Dominican and, you know, when you get older, maybe around your teens, you start to make distinctions when you're talking to your friends, you're working together. I didn't know there was a difference between the Puerto Rican sisters and the Dominican sisters. So you get, you get educated as you come outside of your home and you start interacting um, with different women. When I got a little older and I went to African dance class, I started to make friends with some girls that um, were from Nigeria. And then also a lot of my siblings were born in the Caribbean. Caribbean. I was born um, stateside. So we have a lot of different cultural nuances amongst us. And we have all of our different beauty secrets, our bush teas, um, different remedies for remedies for getting rid of hyperpigmentation and marks. What that usually meant, to be quite honest, was bleaching. <laughs> that was bleaching. I saw it mostly, I actually saw that more so on the Caribbean side, but also on uh, my African American side. So we're not a monolith, right? Africa is a whole continent and we are all throughout the diaspora and global. 
So when I watched Dominican girls, they used to have these Dominican salons. And when I saw my friends take their money, now that we're making our own money, you can get your own school clothes. When they would go, you know, on reference of the Dominican sisters, they would say, I go to this salon. I go to Tati Salon. And they only charge you. It was inexpensive. I remember hearing $10 and $15 to get a Dominican blowout. So I didn't know where, really what a blowout was. However, when I saw um, my friends come back, their hair would have all of this movement, mimicking the characteristics of um, our vanilla counterparts that have straight flowing hair without a kink um, in their hair. And I used to be fascinated because I used to wonder, well, how come my hair doesn't come out like that when my mom is clearly using a good amount of Dixie Peach and Dax. Shout out if you know these hair, gre hair greases. <laughs> Dixie Peach, uh, let's see, grandma, my great grandmother, Sulfa 8, um, Dixie Peach, uh, all the, the hair pomades and hair greases that you would see on the Soul Train commercials. In between Soul Train, I came up with an original Soul Train with Don Cornelius, shout out to Don Cornelius. In between, you saw all of these Posner commercials, Eventually, they came out with the kitty kit, the kitty perms. But there were all these different hair greases. And that's what would get slathered onto our hair when it was parted, when we would get it pressed and curled. And so I call it the mushroom. But one of the most popular styles that we got was after your hair was straightened, it wasn't plaited. After it was straightened, you got the pink rollers. And the pink rollers, you know, your hair would be like a tent, right? Almost like a circus tent. Later, that became the doobie with the bobby pins but it was straight like this and you would get and get it rolled if you're really fancy then your mother invested in some curling papers right because that was the first time i heard any kind of conversation around protecting your ends that was never in the lingo protecting your ends even length retention it just some people got it and some people did and i had some cousins that had just those I always wanted those hairstyles with the, you know, the little baubles, those two little balls on either end of the elastic. And my cousins would have these big double strand twists and their hair was so thick and flourishing. And I was like, how come my hair is not turning out like that? They've got a lot of fluff. And here I am with my little Caribbean plaits, man, looking, I thought it would look busted. <laughs> I even used to try to sneak uh, one or two of my mom's curlers and um, stick it in my bag and on the way to school, oh my gosh, those braids, I love you, mommy, but those braids, man, they were the Caribbean Haitian braids. The Haitian girls, at least my Haitian sisters, their moms put some nice big bowls. They could have those little plaits. They were boxes and the boxes of the plaits were connected, but at least their moms put bowls. My mom just gave me the straight, this is what I know how to do. Your hair is clean, it's braided, your hair is greased, get on out the door and go to school. <laughs> so... I just had the plaits, the little box braids that were connected, right? My mother washed it, greased it. Actually, my hair was actually quite healthy when my mother did it. It wasn't too tight. And it was a consistent routine of she put on Shirley Temple. I don't know if you know who Shirley Temple is or whatever, Abbott and Costello. And um, <laughs> uh, maybe I'd get a little taste of whatever she was making for the weekend for dinner. As we are watching, I love watching Shirley Temple and... Um, was it Little Rascal? No, Little Rascal's on Saturday. But anyway, we got to watch um, some TV, and I would lay across my mother's lap as she was parting and greasing. And my mother was really doing the best that she could with my hair. So body. I never had body. The mushroom. It looked like a mushroom cap, right? You would take the rollers, and you would get it rolled. And it would be kind of neat. The grease was helping it lay. The grease was helping it lay. We didn't use hair hairspray. We had grease. Grease and water. And the grease was applied as your hair was being straightened. Now, if you are walking to church and it rain, it's done. Done. Finish. It's done. All of that, getting your ears singed off, you got scabs on your ears, all of that you went through to just either run and play too hard and start sweating or get wet on the way to, um, to church in the rain and your press and curl was gone. That was so frustrating. I was like, why? <laughs> Candace, this is funny. The kitty perm models are growing up now and coming forward to say they never had an actual relaxer. Just a hard blowout press out. Who is this? The lies. The lies. The pure. Ooh, child. The lies. Ooh, ooh the lies. The lies. That's why I'm sorry. You, you can paint me now. I can appreciate when sisters have, I like creativity when, you know, women have their makeup 
It's looking snatched. Even if it's a product, it looks good. It looks good. Who am I to say? If it looks good, it looks good. However, I know for me, uh, the ease and the relaxation with embracing my hair, and there are new discoveries, even after over three decades of being natural with locks, and particularly someone that has very fine hair. And now as I've let it combine, because as you can see, you know, if you, you're feeling your hair and your skin all along, you see what this is going to get a haircut? I could cut it or I could just pull this off. So this was a, a big fluffy twist. So when I'm saying fine hair, some people say you don't have fine hair. This is a big fluffy twist. I only have 30 locks. So I was correct in feeling and going along with my hair and checking out what it does, right? I could see that, hmm, I might need to let these combine so this has a firm base of support. Otherwise, they're going to break off because that's one of the features and characteristics of fine hair. Now I'm seeing, seeing even more advancements in technology around our hair care. The other day, maybe two days ago, I saw somebody that was working, you know, you see people on social media working miracles with our hair in terms of transformation. Yet, not right or wrong, I saw someone, you know, um, some sisters that um, are balding, right? Where it's thinning with um, our alopecia. A lot of our alopecia is um, traction alopecia from years of the perms. One of my best homies destroyed her hair as a young woman with perms. Who We didn't know. It said no lie. Lies, right? So um, the, I see women that it's going thin. And let's be real. Most of us would be very, very self-conscious. I think if my hair is, I have said it before, if my hair is holding on, if all of my hair is looking like this, guess where this is going? <laughs> I'm going to get the scissors and I'm going to cut this off. I have had clippers. I have no problem. I will rock a baldy and work out some henna designs in two seconds. So I'm not attached to it like that. I'm comfortable enough where I know I have options and I feel comfortable in my own skin. And that is something that I have intentionally, very intentionally cultivated over the years, challenging the thoughts and even kind of dejected or down or even kind of sad thoughts that would just pop up in my head around my hair. And I have a tendency to uh, observe how I'm feeling, the internal dialogue, and take the time to unpack it and to see how my thoughts are making me feel, if that makes sense. And the most practical way, for some reason I've done that for years, so I feel like I can hear even clearer. I notice and I take the time to notice how my thoughts are making me feel, to notice uh, the things that I'm watching how is it making me feel? And I'm humbled that we are greatly, adults, children, not just the children, as humans, we are greatly impacted and affected by what we're watching, what we're mimicking, and what we're listening to. And it's driving a lot of our conscious autopilot automatic behaviors. It's all connected. So anyway, I will cut this. Some of it I just let fall off. It, this is the whole process of what is my hair going to do if I just leave it alone, right? The thoughts is, will people think it's dirty? Will I think it's dirty? Will it have buildup? Will it have loads of lint? Will I have a hairline? How much do I have to twist it? How much work do I have to do? Do I eventually need to go to a salon? How much products do I need? Is my hair going to break off if I don't have products? That's a lot. That's just, that's not even the tip of the iceberg. And if you've got some kinky cottony hair, perhaps you can relate. <laughs> Fallen skies, happy new year to you and your family. What are you growing over there in your neck of the woods? <laughs> so let me just deconstruct this simple style because I'm not going through it. I'm keeping it so simple over here. It's not funny. And I embrace what my hair is going to do and what it does primarily for mental health, emotional health, mental stability, and protecting my psyche. So that may sound a way, but I'm just very, very clear. And by the way, uh, I think it was almost two months, two and a half months ago. I usually never touch what I have here because I know I could lose it from overdoing it, right? A lot of us are losing our natural eyelashes and eyebrows from doing the most. And when we're younger, we don't really forecast the things that we're doing that could have permanent damage. Right. And I personally, I don't want to wear a harsh looking tattoo. So I was in another area of the country, hadn't had my eyebrows threaded. And I decide to go to someone different. Usually I do my own everything. 
right? Very, very few people that I would let touch me because I don't just trust everybody's eye, their interpretation. So why? I decided, ooh, threading salon. Let me let her thread my eyebrows. I said, just a little bit. My eyebrows are already fine. She almost took all my eyebrows. I was like, sheesh, I waited for so long for them to grow out. Now they're, my eyebrows are gone again. Will they come back? So most of them are there. It looks soft and it looks natural. That's the aesthetic that I like. Yes, I get it. I work with some dance companies. I know you look different on camera. How I'm prioritizing my ease and my mental health and relaxation. But in any event, um, I really like these mistaken styles. I can't call it a messy bun, but the carefreeness that I see with other folks with their hair, that's what I've always wanted for myself. So that's what I found with what I'm calling freedom, freedom hair and Afro locks. I can just throw it up. Uh, I'm not doing the slicks, the slickeration and the gel, which I got. It's just too much work. So I found ways to work with my own hair. And when we think of body, I've got body. No spray, no gel, no oil, no butters. It has body because it's, I just got out of the shower a little while ago, because um, it's light. Who knew that our hair could flow? Now, if you have cottony hair, our hair will usually grow up this way in quite a while, especially if you have high shrinkage hair. It grows this way, and it may take a long time. You may think, I don't see any growth. It's there. It's just our characteristics and the features and the behavior of our hair is different. So it grows this way. So when I just stopped focusing on it, before I knew it, it started coming down, falling down this way. Now, if it doesn't have oil, that may take even longer. So I think perhaps it can be helpful to... Focus on other things, like having fun with your hair and the fact that you can move, go swim, and exercise with this uh, shorter, cottony hair. And you can get some really stunningly beautiful and unique curls with this hair with no oil about it. Who knew? And if you're dealing with a lot of scalp issues, I have found I need zero. When I say zero, zero oil, I don't have to grease my scalp. That is another layer of freedom. That is what I have found. So anyway, um, they're not things that I put on my hair because my hair is so delicate and all my locks are flat. I, I want to be um, conscientious of not putting indentation. So there are very few things I will use in my hair. So these kind of cloth elastics that have a lot of give, these I find are very gentle on my hair. So I just have one of these. And instead of all that slickeration, from time to time, if I want to be a little neater, right? Because my hair, I don't get a whole bunch of ringlets. It just looks like it's, this is actually soft. It's, it's actually very, but this is the texture and the color. This is what it does. This is not very aesthetically pleasing to folks. So this is why I, I turn this kind of appreciation as radical self-acceptance, right? If you look, come on, let's be real. If you're looking at a bunch of this and then people are like, ooh, I got to hurry and put some slab and some grease. What kind of gel can I put on that or a perm? Now I just saw this new trend, which when I hear this stuff, I'm like, wow, is this real? I'm just observing. There is a new trend of having natural hair and adding a live chemical relaxer to the edges. I'm like, wow. I'm like, wow. Especially as someone that's worked in a holistic health center where for many years where um and in uh, this field where there's a huge, one of the biggest complaints is fibroid tumors and cysts. So a lot of the reasons why I focus more on health and confidence over so many chemicals, the perfumes are highly toxic. I used to love perfume oils. Uh, but the more I've educated myself over the years, I think many of us, especially at a younger age, are not really privy to how the unbelievable amount of chemicals that we're exposing to ourselves, these things are contributing to cancer. How can we not think that they're contributing to cancer, um, lymphatic blockage, right? This is the lymphatic drainage area around your chest, around the inguinal crease, around your, um, your hips. These are drainage areas. Your lymphatic system is your body's sewage system. So the onslaught, the, the never-ending onslaught of chemicals this body is over 100 trillion cells. So it's constant communications, what's going on it, what we're smelling. We're having chemical and hormonal responses to everything we're putting on the body, everything that we're subjecting the body to. 
What would make us think that our body is not having a response to all these chemicals? It just doesn't make sense. So when we turn around and we've got a diagnosis of cancer, it's like many of us are like, oh, I'm shocked. And many of us go, especially without guidance, just for surgery. Now, again, I'm not make, making any of this right or wrong because I'm not here to tell grown folks what to do. It is ultimately our responsibility to take care of ourselves because who really has a vested interest in the prescription that you need for your healing and your thriving? It's not really anybody else's responsibility. And that may sound a way, but it just, it is what it is. So only you have the utmost vested interest in what is going to take for you to have some contentment, for you to have some peace and calm that is sustainable, for you to have some healthy esteem that is sustainable, for you to have a high functioning immune system. And for those uh, folks out there that would like to become intentional parents, if we have lackluster compromised ingredients in our body and we're choosing also partners, parenting partners, who have weak ingredients, the two of us, and we're most of our uh, consumption patterns are recreational, then why would we expect for our offspring to have to be highly functionally functioning mentally in terms of the hardware, the brain, or chemically? It just doesn't make sense, right? And these things aren't discussed. I don't observe these things being discussed culturally. If anything, it seems that the wisdom, right? I grew, I remember having both great grandmothers in the house. And the wisdom, the wisdom, not information, distinction, love distinctions over here. There's a distinction between lots of information and wisdom, tried and tested, not over six months, not over a year, not over two years. You're talking 35, 40, 50 years of trial and error, looking at chicken pox, measles, liniment, herbal teas, people coming to you swelling, boo-boos, male, female, different ages tried and tested there is a lot of information today that is manipulated and is not given in a full context dangerous <laughs> but anywho back to this body it's light it's fluffy it's cottony it's um it feels nice and balanced and spongy and it has some body so i got i have a i got a little ponytail little piece of ponytail that flows i'm like ooh I remember I wanted, I had to get beads. Shout out to Auntie Joanne, my auntie that could really do some cornrows. Oh, she gave me these cornrows one time where I felt so gorgeous. And they had, I had red and white beads, honey. And I went outside to jump double dutch and I was, ooh, I was shaking those beads. I felt so, I felt so wonderful. I will never forget that part of right. Y'all know, anybody know this style? It was parted down the center. And you got, she could just take her bone off. She orders. Her daughter can braid and do locks. And some people just have it in them to do hair. I have food and, and gardening. I got I got that thing. Now I am pretty creative with the double strand twist. And I tried, but it just wasn't my first nature the braids. You know, maybe my fingers are too thick. <laughs> so there is body. Our hair has body. Think about it. Think about it. Y'all tell me what you think in the comments. When you when you buy the conditioner, you buy the product, even when you look on these different YouTube channels. Um, this will condition normal to dry hair that is frizzy for great for kinky before C hair. Where do you see body? Where, where do you see body without a so-called texturizer, which is a perm, uh, another type of uh, permanent relaxer? They say semi-permanent. All of this is like word salad. Is this going to be the season where we choose to acknowledge the word salad and the play on semantics and the the triggering and the gaslighting? But anywho, who would have known that kinky hair can fall and have body because it doesn't have oil and stuff in it? Maybe this is overly simple, but this is like a shocker. This is a shocker to me. Our hair has body, though it is different. We have different characteristics. Had I not gone down the rabbit hole and allowed myself to see what my hair is going to behave like, I might have never known. Right. I may have never known if I didn't let it go through this whole process where I had the twinkie hair. You can see that video where um, 
I just build up no chemicals, just from oil. Uh, what was it? Maybe a little bit of um, coconut oil and olive oil and my fine hair built up. And one day I went to touch it, it felt like wax. And I washed it over and over and over. I had to strip my, my poor little delicate hair down. Sure, damaged it. I'm sure that contributes to even some of this stuff I'm thinning over here where I've cut it um, numerous times because this, this hair, I don't know about y'all. Some people say I could take it. My hair can't take it. So I wouldn't have, look at that piece falling off right there. I wouldn't have a hairline. I'm not going to have eyebrows, eyelashes, or a hairline. And I might contribute to early balding if I don't listen to what my body is communicating. Is this making sense? The body is, the skin is communicating. Um, the internal organs, which get no play. Nobody cares about the kidney, the liver, the spleen. Not popular. They don't get any play until somebody's cutting you open and pulling it out. Our organs are really, really important. So a lot of our eating and even exercising as someone that's been in fitness for many years Again, all of the quick fixes because I want this and I can pay for this. It's not taking into consideration the organs. It's not taking into consideration the fact that the body rejects foreign substances, chemicals, liquids. It's, it's not, call me overly simple. I mean, I have my grandma lose eyes now, but we're not thinking long-term and we've got so much else to contend with in this unnatural environment, we're an environment today where we're surrounded by chemicals. Sometimes a mosquito truck goes by, you know, uh, where I am and just sprays these highly caustic sprays into the air. And I'm like, this is, it's insane. So it's so disrespectful um, of the body temple, even uh, when I think sometimes of just how the human psyche is working for those folks um, that smoke. Um, cigarettes and knowing the information that's out about cigarettes and how expensive it is. But when folks, I'm going to smoke whatever I want to smoke anyway, not consider children, not consider other people's lungs. That is a mindset. That is a mindset. It's a mindset, right? And so I'm very into mindset as a coach because it is quiet as kept. It's the shortcut, whether that's for weight release, transforming your body, changing certain habits to unpack and to really get a clear objective insight on behavior, your psyche, how your body works, how your mind is working, how your subconscious is working. This kind of critical thinking and discernment is not encouraged. So I have found when I take a lot of distraction off of the table, it makes for a lot of clarity in decision-making. And if that is the state of mind, it's going to carry over into what you choose to eat who you choose to give access to your reproductive organs and your sacred parts, who you choose to give access to your finances because it's a state of being. Give access to your finances because it's a state of being, a state of mind. Super practical. Hope this makes sense. <laughs> when you squeeze your locks, does it feel dense? Mine still feel very spongy and light. Wonder if they ever feel... No, they don't. And ever since I stopped using oil, it's just, it's just like, it's, it's a sponge. This is enjoyable. Now, I did like the feeling of smoothing oil onto my hair. It feels soothing going on, but I did it so many times. And again, I'm not making it wrong. Some people may find that that works for their hair. However, that attracted dirt and dust, and it feels good going on. But initially, it becomes like a layer, and it becomes embedded. The hair starts to become stiff. It's like old oil. I liken it to, if you think of the cast iron pots, or the cast iron pans, the cast iron skillets. When you initially get them, they need to be seasoned so eventually they can become um, non-stick pans. So the oil, the oil, you season it with oil. Some people season it with oil and salt, but uh, after a while of using it over and over, it becomes a non-stick surface. And sometimes you can even see like the grease kind of gets layered on there after years of use. So I kind of liken that to, and FYI, that's what's happening in a lot of our arteries, taken from potato chip junk food, former junkie, that it gets hard and it's like layers and layers and layers of, it becomes something else, right, from our habits. And so health is cumulative. 
all the intense acne that I had, even though I was using eating healthy for years, I didn't want to acknowledge, but eventually I had to acknowledge that all of that junk that I was eating, and I was a junk food junkie, and I don't make myself wrong. It was the pattern I was following, like the other people and the women around me. It was the self-soothing. It was dopamine, right? It was dopamine soothing myself with candy and penny candies and cookies and cakes. And then when I got a little more money in my pocket, the Entenmann's cakes and the lemon pies, these fake artificial pies and little Debbie's. It was a hot, stinky mess. It was a hot, stinky mess. And eventually I became a, a, a vegetarian health food junkie. And so years and years and years of habits, do we really think this season, this new season, some people say new year, this new cycle, I don't tell grown folks what to do, especially those that are not paying me, but I invite you to consider in your quiet moments, do we really think that one or two green juices and 21 day detox is going to negate all of the years of habits that we have had. Do you really think it's just gonna just come out in your poop? That's like the self-deception, which highly encourages these days and it's very profitable. Do we really think that everything we've accosted our body with, all the recreational eating, it's fun, we're always gonna get give each other a high five on our recreational habits. So we don't think of the organs and immune system and all the cells, we're over a trillion cells, each cell. It's like a living, it's not like it's a living being that eats, poops, has cellular DNA, has memory. Do we really think that we get over like that? You look around and you tell me, look at the numbers. Our numbers are off the charts. And I'm not talking about body positivity because some of my most favorite folks are just as fluffy and as stunning as anything. So I'm all for, I mean, this. some of my favorite sheroes are nice or big and fluffy. So I'm not talking about that in our styling. However, I'm very wary. I'm very wary because we are so highly programmed and deeply influenced. I'm very wary of the marketing um, target to make me complacent around my numbers. So I've been in the health industry for years and having had cancer, uh, had clients diagnosed with cancer um, my own family, uh, quite a bit of morbid obesity, diabetes, heart disease, um, the different comorbidities, um, stomach staplings, bypasses, um, dealing with that with a lot of my clients is kind of late after the fact after you're diagnosed to then start scrambling to change your habits. And it's very, very expensive. And not everybody has the same medical care. Not everybody has the same degree of, of um, support financial or educational or medical. So I figured out many years ago that I'm on my own when it comes to my health. And I've decided that, you know, some people will say, we're all going to die of something. That is such a cop-out mentality. So I'm not here to make folks wrong, but if that's working for you and you feel good about that, rock with that. The quality of life though, while here, I want to be able to run jump and play as pain free as possible as long as possible in my human suit. So that takes something. That takes an, an investment. And in addition, when it comes to health and confidence, which is a distinction I love to make, feels a lot better, more sustainable, health and confidence over a made up ever moving goalpost of beauty. It leads to a lot more contentment. <laughs> So um, going down the rabbit hole to see what this hair will do has been a surprise. And one of the surprises has been that my hair has, um, it has some body. So one of my favorite styles, especially as I like to move early in the morning. And y'all are welcome to join me. Every Friday is a community class that's donation-based. So I'm not turning anyone away. Um, and for folks that have been asking, the link should be working in the upper right corner of this because I'm on the YouTube platform page. There's a link for the Flower Fit application. Um, there's a link for the Discord. You will need to download Discord that is private so I can see who's in there. I can bump people out and not accept people because safety is uh, non-negotiable for me, period. I'm not having a conversation about that. So there's an application. You must be able to be identified an email with your avatar, with name. It has to uh, match up, otherwise you'll sit 
in the queue are not just get accepted. It is what it is. It's just kind of climbing out here. So the Discord um, uh, app link, the Flower Fit application, the Raw Vegan Goddess Cakes, Vegan Cakes Workshop. You don't need a dehydrator for that. Whole Living Foods in the Hood. Uh, the Whole Foods um, Living Foods Lifestyle Guide is there. And the website is there if you'd like to um, join the classes, which are Monday through Thursday at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we don't wait for New Year's around here. Way, way ahead of schedule. Way ahead. And actually today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is um, coaching, weekly group um, coaching. So that's Whole Living Foods and Fitness. So here's my quick, uh, this is a nice brown, very stretchy um, elastic. So I am not, do you think I'm going to? Slick this down. Heck to the no. I'm not doing that. Now, if I wanted a neater, neater look, what I would simply do is just take um, one of these hairpins, making sure that they have the little tips on it, because sometimes these break off and they can scratch your scalp and we want to be really delicate. All I have to do is like, and I'm not pulling it tight because tight is no bueno. And instead of letting the pin go horizontal, I'll put it on the cottony part and I'll just put it there and I'll let it go upwards. So look at that. No need to slick. <laughs> so I can just put little little accents if I just want to pull stuff in a little bit. I can put the hairpin. That's it. I can spray with a little spritz it with a very light spray of water. Keep spray of water. Keep it moving, but it has body. It's getting body. <laughs> I have, and it's it's just fun. I think we should be able to enjoy. Our time, I'd like to enjoy my time in my body temple. And I'm going, I'm intentional. I'd like to enjoy my time when my hair is white, when I have wrinkles, when my body shows wear and tear, because the body gets wear and tear. How can we think that we're going to be on the planet for almost 100 years and not experience any wear and tear? Something I think is a little off with that. And those kind of off paradigms, I don't know. I just, I just, again, I've seen a, very few, less than less than 0.5% of people that have some work done and look good. Like Cicely Tyson, she looks stunning. She really did. I'm sure she had work done. You see some, but the vast majority of folks, we look a little, humans, we start looking a little plasticky and artificial. And so it's a trade-off. You trade off the drop in the face for something that's artificial. And folks don't consider... These different kind of things, if you think of a prosthetic, right? You can get prosthetic arms and legs. If you're putting something, just think, real simple. If I put like this in my face and it's weighted there, it drops. Because this is our organic vessel. It's organic. So why not, why not let's take our body to the healthiest and the most toned it could be? Why not do that without putting all this extra stuff? Do we really think this stuff won't contribute to cancer? What do are, what are the cells have to say about all of this stuff? The cells even respond to our emotions and how we feel. So just, I think we're, we're enticed. We're enticed to these shortcuts. <clears throat> and I've never seen all the shortcuts with alcohol, smoking, drinks, drugs, and just not taking care of the basics. I've never seen it pan out well. And I've had a wide span of people from different cultures that I've worked with over the years, different demographics financially from in the PJs to penthouses. And there are certain things that I've seen um, consistent. Now I have to say shout out to Grandma Lou because she stands out to me. And my great grandma Jean, her, my great grandma on my um, father's side. And then my grandma Mackie, my great grandma Mackie on my mother's side, two great grandmothers and my paternal grandmother. All of these women <clears throat> were very comfortable in their skin and when I look around, I was having this discussion with some um, dear women um, the other day. Over the years, why Grandma Lou, she stands out in such stark contrast to everybody else. <clears throat> and we have this conversation. I realized something else about Grandma Lou. Grandma Lou, she had plaits and her little cornrows and in her 90s, I think at some point. Um, I don't know, maybe her hair was a little thin, but she had a cute little salt and pepper Afro. I always saw her rock her own hair. But I realized that grandma, she radiated, she radiated something that I 
I don't know if I can count on one hand that I've, I've experienced in other people. She radiated a contentment and peace. Not necessarily, not a settling, not a complacency. Grandma radiated a kind of peace, a type of ease and relaxation. Now she was dark chocolate. So I know she experienced some things, especially being from Barbados. I know with that dark chocolate skin, as a mom, she's seen some things, experienced some things. I'm sure some things not so very nice. But my experience of it, she was the, she's the most pleasant human being I ever encountered. And I always wonder, how come grandma's not so angry and bitter and complaining? She just wasn't available. She wasn't available for gossip. It wasn't even like a conversation. You were gossiping, she would just flutter away, flutter away like a little butterfly. She just wasn't available uh, for that. So I was like, wonder why, how does she get that way? Why was she so different? So I see a lot of fashion. I like fashion. I can appreciate makeup. I see a lot of stuff. I see a lot of travel. I see a lot of things, yet I don't get a sense of contentment or peace. I'm like, wow. So I remember a long time ago, I said, no offense to the Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama, but I was like, I don't need the Dalai Lama because I got Grandma Lou walking around in the flesh. And that is, again, a really important distinction because I, representation does matter. And I needed to see um, a chocolate woman walking around living her best life. Again, full of challenges, full of challenges. Yet I never met someone that was just so, so gracious, so giving, so full of common sense. She didn't make herself available for foolishness, as she would call it, right? That was her state of being. Right. So I didn't see it with Susie Orman, Oprah, uh, yoga classes. I didn't see her up in the church all the time. One time I said, Grandma, you going to church? You started laughing. She said, I'm not going there to get out of my money. Just so full of common sense. So orderly. Her her orderliness and her the sense in, in her home of, of food cooking and Sunday dinner was done early and sweet cocoa bread and tea and helping her grate the coconut. Oh my gosh, those are some of the most warm feelings of of love and care that I have ever experienced with plaits and no makeup, dark chocolate, not a whole lot of wrinkles, but some wrinkles by the time she reached her 90s. So she left such a distinct impression because she stands in such stark contrast to everyone around. These folks have a lot more money than her. She didn't have a whole bunch of wigs and weaves and extensive wardrobe. She still had the sewing machine and my sisters and cousins were making still dresses every time the school season came around, they had these McCormick, some kind of patterns to make school dresses. So that was still happening at my grandma's house when she would come here from Barbados and, um, and be in New York. So we got a lot of stuff, but the tone is like, it's so much anxiety. There's so much anxiety. There's so much distress. There's so much panic. I didn't get that from grandma. Go figure. <laughs> and she was comfortable in her skin. And so that gives me something to emulate because we we do, we mimic and we copy and we follow. So if grandma could emanate and radiate a relaxation and a peace and a, a focus, she said to me before she transitioned, she said, and she was so cheerful. She had such a sense of humor. She had such a sense of humor, such a sense of humor. If she can radiate that without having access to all of these resources, then she shows me she has demonstrated possibilities, right? So it's one thing to turn on social media, which I am convinced. I'm calling these are, these are trance boxes. They're hypnotic bo boxes. Hypnosis just means you're going to a trance. You're looping thoughts, feelings, triggered emotions, old memories, worries about um, the future, you're not present, and it leads to a lot of mindless activity. These are trans boxes. So that being said, there is a lot of benefit that can be had out of these trans boxes if we consume them very conscientiously, very purposefully. Otherwise, uh, you could stay in suspended animation in these boxes and lose 25, 30 years if we had to add it up off of your life in front of these screens. And uh, a lot of fright and fear and triggering of men, women, whatever label you want to call yourself is happening in front of these boxes. I find these boxes, greetings, greetings, Dora. Um, 
We're all meeting today at uh, 2 p.m. Same time, Eastern Standard Time. So, Nia, you know, holidays on me, you know, never mind. Um, but we're continuing our study group, our positive accountability, um, and our sharing of the garden. If you've started your garden, your personal movement practice, looking for specific results. Right. If you're exercising and you're implementing certain things, you should not be looking the same one year from that. Even three months, every three months, you should be seeing significant change in your body. If not, there's likely some blind spots that you're not addressing. That is what it is. <laughs> so there is a, a group coaching. There's a paid coaching and there's also flower fit. Um, there's not a charge for that. Uh, that's just for people to come and reciprocate with their energy, um, however they'd like to. But again, it's coming up together around activities, the garden, personal movement practice, and peaceful consumption, lifestyle practices that don't leave you and you don't yourself when other people flake out of you, right? So uh, that's going to be continuing. So I really, really... You know, I was looking this morning at uh, the pictures because some folks share their food, their heart monitor, their tracker, their fitness calendars um, throughout the year. It's really inspirational, um, that kind of climate, because we say I've heard a lot of women say, oh, I want to be around people that are like minded, though I observe it's very easy for us to get off track. There's something that we're kind of conditioned to. <clears throat> I think um, being envious, we're human, envious which comes from insecurity, um, projecting a lot of our fears and insecurities onto each other. So I don't often see that uh, we're coming together around specific activities. So with Flower Fit, <clears throat> the objective is to come together around sharing, you started your garden or um, what have you planted? Or even perhaps where you've had some perceived failures. The garden is such a wonderful vision board for your life because it's no failure, it's feedback. How, how else are you gonna learn? How else are you gonna learn if you don't try some things that don't work? So it's a safe space um, to do that is your garden. It's the most wonderful vision board that I know. And then it's also your body temple with your personal movement practice. It is one of the most deeply therapeutic practices that I know that has been consistent for years. That makes me feel better, that makes me feel empowered, that's not me telling, saying an affirmation that's a lie to myself, right? I'm demonstrating to myself resilience, pushing through discomfort, uh, working towards a goal, consistency, and I'm also measuring my results. And I don't have to worry about sweating out the hairdo. <laughs> this hairstyle is so, is so perfect for movement. And when I sweat, which I sweat quite often, it just evaporates. No smell because there's nothing, there's no oil or butters or creams that is holding this, the, any kind of scent inside of the hair. Then we have um, lavender, rosemary, um, thyme, um, um, nopales, uh, cactus, um, loads of aloe. There's numerous herbs in the yard. So that's the vision for Afronomics and Afroflowonomics. Um, there's a lot of our culture uh, when it comes to food preparation, um, my Afro-American and Afro-Caribbean um, roots, I take a lot of those foods. I'm just not using the flour. I'm not using the flesh. I have eaten flesh, so I'm not knocking anyone. Wherever you are in your journey, it's your journey. I don't really think we benefit from putting each other down for where we are in our process. I don't think it's helpful. I can learn something from you, whatever color you are, whatever you eating. Because I come to get what I come to get. I come to learn. That benefits me. But I, I'm observing this. It's not a beneficial use of our precious time. It's, a, it's an expensive currency, your time and attention. Are you getting something back for the time that you're investing? Are you encouraged to get into action around the things that you say that you value? I have a series of litmus tests. I love litmus tests because they help me come outside my ego, ego to see if I'm being, we all have one, right? to see if I'm being effective. And if I'm not being effective, then likely it's something that I need to change or to tweak. So I've taken a lot off the table, a lot of distraction, so I can really allow the stuff that is fueling subconscious and mindless behaviors to come to the surface so I can observe them objectively, unpack them, put them into a perspective, and strategize on where I need to take corrective um, action 
trying different strategies on for size, whether that's food, fitness, spending. We'll always be imperfect, but so what? <laughs> being perfect, if you get 1% better every day, then how much does that give you at the end of a, a month? You know, so shout out to T Ford. I'm looking at her pictures this morning. I'm I'm just so blown. I am blown away. And it's not the first time that I've um, been honored to hold space for somebody's transformation. But there's something to be said for showing up for yourself before your children, before your job, before your spouse, showing up for yourself consistently. That has a whole, it has a whole energy. It has a whole feel to it that I don't think any kind of makeup or clothing could compare to how you feel about yourself. When you look at your calendar and you say, I showed up 20 days for myself. This month, I showed up 25 days. This month, you know, it's like a game, a positive game you play with yourself. This day, this month, I showed up 30 days for myself. Christmas and New Year's, I'm showing up every day for myself. Do you know how that makes you feel? It doesn't matter. Some days, maybe you're operating at 60%. Maybe some days you finish half of the workout. But showing up for yourself consistently, it gives you something that the other stuff on the outside is it's not sustainable. So what you're giving yourself by demonstrating to yourself, not lying to yourself, the ability to push through discomfort for yourself. You live with yourself in your body temple every day. So we move because it how it makes us feel. And then you don't have to worry about how much what you what you look like, right? And you can enjoy yourself, yourself in your body, even if it's fluffy and if you're in route to what your results are. You don't have to make where you are now. Um, such a downer. You can really step into the moment. I'm getting better, a little bit better every day, which is not lying to yourself. If you're applying um, corrective action and getting into action, I'm getting a little bit better every day. So it's important, I think, not to lie to ourselves, right? Because lying to yourself can have you self-medicating because you can't outrun your subconscious. The back of your mind, you know if you're telling lies to yourself, that usually make you want to go medicate with some ice cream or some chips. <laughs> So, you know, you'll have many failures. That's why I love the garden, because you get used to failure. You know how many expensive seeds I've lost in that garden? Lots, but it's taught me a lot. I'm still learning right now about um, remediating the soil and having pulled so many beautiful vegetables out. You got to put something back into that soil. It looks like it's soil and outside, but it's dirt if you've totally depleted it. So there's so many lessons inside the garden, which is why I keep encouraging y'all. Garden therapy, wherever you're paying rent or mortgage, peaceful consumption. Are you eating food that loves you back? And a personal movement practice daily, daily, daily. It's like mental, emotional hygiene. Y'all feeling it? <laughs> so this hair, it does have a little bit of body. Look, it's got a little flow. No oil, no butters, no twisting. It's freedom hair, literally. Afro flower freedom here. And I got a little something coming up this season with Afronomics. I think you can do a little creative stuff with it. Look at that. I can put another little loose hair holder on it. I can move this over to the side. So there are things that complement. I don't have to do all that slicking. I don't have to. Why am I working so hard? Why am I working so hard? I'd rather take that energy and put it to this food preparation and to this. Um, into this garden. So by the way, do you have your checklist um, for your gym? Do you have your fitness trackers? Do any of you have those expensive Apple watches you've paid for? You didn't read the manual. You're not using it efficiently. Are you looking at your calendar a month at a glance? A lot of things I tell folks in the beginning, but only half folks be listening. You got to come all the way back around. Well, I told you in the beginning, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a learning process. So do you have you been printing out your movement practice, aka your exercise? I like to call it vigorous, joyous movement. Have you printed it out? Right? Some people we're so scared of judgment of our own judgment that it really paralyzes us. Whereas if you just look and see, you again, just like you're here, you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you have to look and see, wow, out of 30 days, I did five days. Okay, that's not zero days. So then if you just start thinking, well, let me do a little bit better, you may get to 10 days and then to 15 days. Yet it's going to really be a source of inspiration 
and a driving force when you can see what you have done. I invite you to print it out and put it on the refrigerator. Every time you go in to get your little fuel and your little snacky snacks and you say, wow, I got seven days. Okay. I bet you, because that's how the mind operates. It's a cybernetic system, just like putting the coordinates inside of an airplane. If you don't set goals, specific goals, if you say, eh, I want to look a little bit, that's not specific. That's not a specific goal. If you go into Puerto Rico from um, Brooklyn, you need to put those coordinates inside the cybernetic system. Otherwise, the coordinates that are being put in for you are coming from the trans boxes. And so just one woman's perspective, everything, I'm so humble, everything we're watching, it's like nutrition or negative nutrition. Every, don't, I don't have to make it bad or wrong, yet it may be ineffective towards your goals. Every gossip show, every complaining show, every piece of education, every language course, everything you're logging into this internet, ethernet, is affecting you chemically and emotionally and driving your behaviors. So if you start to listen to your internal dialogue, you're listening to communication, the language is going inside of your computer and it's playing back on loop and all different kinds of combinations. And if we're just very haphazard, there goes our life. And we'll start to become complacent and join in the, the popular collective narrative of giving ourselves an out and excuses. And your excuses, they may be valid excuses, yet your valid excuses will likely be running your life. And you could be in suspended animation for 20, 30, 40 years. Life is passing you by. And so is your grip strength. So is your your um, your body composition, um, gaining body fat, losing flexibility is slowly leaving. It's slowly leaving as we don't challenge ourselves to safe discomfort. Hope this makes sense. So anyway, I wanted to check in with you all today. We can't have body. We can't have bouncing and behaving hair. We can't enjoy the hair that we have been divinely assigned to really embrace what we have. Um, to be for yourself doesn't mean you're against anybody else. We can embrace the different, I don't even know if I want to call them flaws, but being differently formed, you can embrace it. And you can make a lot of these challenges, your, you can embrace them as your, your top features. You know, it really, it takes something. It takes a conscientious um, decision to... Determine I'm going to be comfortable in my skin and I'm going to enjoy my time in my body temple. You know what? You'll likely find you more so hit your results because you're feeling better without lying to yourself. Because <laughs> your subconscious knows if you are lying. So I'm about to go get into the garden. I have some classes today. I'm inviting you all to join me uh, on other platforms and social media because I'll post some of the workouts on some little snippets on what do you call it? I think TikTok. And on, uh, what do you call it, um, Instagram. So sometimes I'll put a little bit of the workouts um, there. There are a few workouts. Eventually those workouts will go to the library on Body Culinary. I invite you to check out and to download a copy for yourself. If you want to get off the whole stroll of dieting, whole living foods in the hood with menus to fit your budget. Um, if you are in the private coaching, it's a lot that happens there because it's early in the morning. I know some folks don't want to get up early, but when I tell you it is a gift to get up early, we're missing out on so much. If you're only missing out on fitness, if you're missing out on coaching, most of the opportunities that have taken me around the world, fitness competitions, most of the best expenses I've ever had have come from me getting up early, right? Literally. The early bird catches the worm. I know there's worms out in my yard. I have worm dens that I'm cultivating worms. But if you get up early, there are a lot of gifts that are afforded to you. And it can really make you be much more conscientious of all the time wasters. The areas we're allowing folks to take up, where we are allowing folks to, we're giving away hours of our time to, and not getting anything back beneficial for it. You know, liability conversations, we're not getting, we're not learning anything new. Yet, it's comfortable and it's familiar. So our subconscious, our ego, part of our mental processing will often go for what is comfortable. And this will often play out even in relationships for what is comfortable and familiar, even if it's not beneficial. Just some things to think about. So a lot of coaching goes on uh, in the morning because a lot of the results will also come from a mindset shift. It's easy to go. It, it takes nothing to go with what's familiar to you. Though when you branch out into the unknown and you get uncomfortable, ugh, we are missing out. We are missing out. We are missing. Best kept secret. 
4 a.m. is on 8 a.m. Um, there will be some other classes that are coming usually because I can't circulate. I'm one person and I find social media a little, um, it's a lot. So if you are up early, that's usually where you can catch me. I used to come on early in the mornings, but there were so many different trolling elements that's not really for me. Um, and so many disjointed random energies that I'm like, mm -mm. that's why I'm on Discord. <laughs> I can monitor, I can bump people, I don't have to let folks in. And safety and respect, however you presenting, is non-negotiable. That's the kind of energy. If you've read, if you're interested in healthy eating, starting a garden, personal movement practice, I got you all day. Anything else, I, I can't help you. <laughs> so I'm inviting you all to create a great day on purpose just because you said so. Um, feel free to replay this. Um, one of my top secrets, I've said it before, to create positive company for you as you're cleaning, which is a whole meditation and decluttering unto itself, chopping vegetables, um, burning a little um, incense, um, putting your little seedlings in the garden. Uh, in the next couple of months, there's several things also you can start to um, plant inside the house so that they will be ready once the um, last frost is gone so that you can start to put them outside in your garden. So there is so much coming up. I have so much, I've been told like I have so much in my head, I'm so eager to put it out, but then also I'm very uh, cautious of the the internet environment. Sometimes a little messy for me. <laughs> Create a great day on purpose, like, comment respectfully, subscribe, and I will see you all very soon.